In this video, we are going to go over a little bit more of an advanced type of conversion of rates. And we're going to do that with dimensional analysis, which I went over in an earlier video. But I think it might be time to up your dimensional analysis game, shall we? Oh, we shall. Let's check this out. So we're going to convert these rates into rates with two different units. So that's going to involve not one, but two conversions. And as I mentioned in an earlier video about dimensional analysis, when we analyze dimensions or units, we let the units lead the way. So let me remind you of how we can do that with this problem here. Let's rock it. Three miles per hour, we're going to convert into units of feet per minute. How do we do that? We start out just with this base amount that we have. So we have three miles per, and then I'll just write it as one hour, because that's technically what it is, three miles per one hour. Okay, now we want to convert this into feet per minute. So it's really up to you what you want to choose to convert first. Do you want to choose to convert miles into feet, or do you want to convert the time, hours, into minutes? So I'm going to convert first miles into feet. It really doesn't matter where you start. So if I convert miles into feet, I'm going to focus only on the units. So miles, if I'm going to convert that into feet, needs to cancel out or divide out. So I'm going to put miles in the denominator so that these two divide out. That leaves one place for feet to go, the distance units, in the numerator, feet. And sure enough, the miles are going to cancel out. And what I'll do now is I will input in the conversion amounts that I have. Your teacher might ask you to memorize these or you might be given a table of conversion amounts or conversion factors. There are 5,000 280 feet in one mile. There you go. So the numbers come after we've done the analysis or thinking about the units. Next, I'm going to need to cancel out hours. So we've got feet in the numerator, check. Now I want minutes in the denominator. Well, how do we get there? Well, I want to cancel out hours. So that needs to go in the numerator so that hours and hours will divide out. And then naturally minutes need to go in the denominator, which is what we wanted at the end of all of this. So hours divide out, which is great. And now we enter in the conversion amounts between hours and minutes. There's one hour for every 60 minutes, or 60 minutes for every one hour. Now we're in great shape. All we need to do to move forward is one of two things. You could either multiply across, because these are just fractions with numbers now. Your units are set. You've got feet over minutes. So we're just dealing with multiplying across, or you could look for the greatest common factors or common factors between numerators and denominators. I'm going to reduce down a little bit here. I've got that 60 and 3 share a common factor of 1, and then 20, right? So, sorry, they share a common factor of 3, and 3 reduces to 1, and 60 reduces to 20. Now, before I go any further, I also notice that you could do 5280 over 20, but I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So, I've got 5280, 1 times 5280 times 1 is 5280, or 5280. The units are feet. Right, we already have that locked in, which is great. And then we've got 20, our units are minutes in the denominator. Beautiful. So we've got the units we want. Awesome. All that's left now is reducing that fraction. You could either use a calculator or use a little bit of mental math. But when you divide that out, you'll get 264 feet per minute. That's it, y'all. This is a little bit of an extended dimensional analysis. You just want to make sure that your units lead the way. So if that one helped out and you're like, yeah, I'm ready to go, then great. If not, or you need a different example with different kinds of units, let's hit another one. So we're going to convert 200 centimeters per second to meters per minute. All right, so we'll start with the 200 centimeters per second, 200 centimeters per second. You could put it over one like we did before, write it like that. Now we want to get rid of either seconds or centimeters. I guess I'll go with time first this time. So that means in this next fraction, I need to have seconds in the numerator so that they divide out, because it's in the denominator here, and that by default has minutes in the denominator, because we're doing time over time. There are 60 seconds in one minute, so automatically we know that we're going to be multiplying by 60 there. It's great. So the seconds cancel out, and we are now good with minutes. Now we need to convert centimeters into meters. Okay, well, to get rid of centimeters, they're in the numerator, so we would have to divide them out and place them in the denominator with our conversion. So centimeters, great, we'll cancel, and they're going to go with meters, because it's distance compared to distance. We have one meter for every 100 centimeters, and now we're ready to rock and roll. So this dimensional analysis takes care of 
knowing when do we multiply by certain numbers and when do we divide. It's beautiful thinking. I love it. So I'm going to put the 200 over 1. Now it's up to you how we proceed here, although I think simplifying might be the way to go, just a little bit, reducing some fractions. I recognize that 100 and 200 share a greatest common factor of 100. So the 100 divides into itself 100 times, leaving us with 1, and into 200, 2 times. I should say 100 divides into 100 once, not 100 times. Now we're left with all 1's in the denominator. So we've got 1 times 1 times 1. So our denominator is 1 and our units remaining are minutes, which is what we wanted. So I got 1 minute all over, or all under, 2 times 60, and that's times 1, which is 120. The units that remain, meters, which is exactly what we wanted. So again, let your units lead the way here, peeps. If you've got a unit in the numerator that needs to be, well, taken care of, right, deleted, then you need to divide by that unit on the next step. If you have a unit in the denominator that needs to be taken care of, you need to multiply by that unit in the next step. As I've illustrated in these problems, they're complicated looking, but cleaning it up one piece at a time makes these problems so doable and kind of satisfying in a numerical kind of way.